Hi everyone, Gerard Scarpacey here. I'm super excited this week to have this beautiful color pre-done um, out here in Southern California. We live by a great um, Davines educator, Alison Daza. And she pre-colored this mannequin here into something that's super trendy um, at the moment, something we're seeing a lot of, this kind of, I guess, two-tone color on one side, color on the other, that kind of complement each other. Um, and I wanted to just walk through like how I might cut something like this. I think, you know, number one, you don't want to overly layer something like this from the top, or at least I don't want to. I think, you know, to keep this, and for this beautiful color, um, Kelly's got the formulas and we'll talk about the Davines products that were used a little bit. But back to, you know, when I got the mannequin and I interpreted, I didn't really even know what I was going to get. Um, I know that Allison was inspired by one of Tom Connell, who is the uh, international kind of hair art director for Davin is one of his recent collections called Meta. Um, I know that there was some inspiration from that. Um, and I look through and of course it's got that beautiful languid kind of feeling that a lot of these collections have had recently. And I just want to interpret for myself. But what I wanted to say was, I want all the layering to be on the underneath and I want the top to have a much more one length feeling. I think this will really complement this color and not break up that beautiful surface. So if you're someone who watches very often, um, last week I did a variation of what I'm doing here um, on a shorter hair, um, you know, where I kind of came in and I did this like razor undercut and then with the hair on the top, I kept it much more one length and you slicing. And I thought here I could do a longer version of that and also just give it a little bit of triangularity or A-line. So one of the things I'm doing different from the shorter version is I am over directing a little bit more squarely at the back, taking about half inch sections. And you can see this beautiful, this was colored using view, which is um, the beautiful, beautiful uh, demi-permanent line from Davines. Um, and then the other side was colored with mask with vibrochrome, which is the permanent line. And again, Kelly has the formulas um, and we'll see how beautiful these are as the hair begins to dry. So what I'm doing here is over-directing, bringing this straight back to a flat wall. I don't need to come like all the way to the center. I think perhaps that might be a little too much. Now with the edge of the blade and a fairly open stroke, I'm really skimming the surface of these sections. So keeping all the length and all the thickness from below the occipital bone, but putting in tons of micro layers on the surface, which will kind of you know, it's like, uh, it's gonna suck out all the density so that the hair on the top can just kind of play over it. You know, I just with long hair like this, especially when it's damp and I've got a little bit of conditioner left in, a little bit of the oi conditioner, I just love the quality that that gives the hair and the slip. But to get the really nice tension, you can see I just kind of pinch the hair together sometimes. You know, it's just a little bit more sculpting. Of course, precision is involved, um, but I'm not cutting in an angular way. So I don't need to cut exactly the same way that I normally would by trapping the hair between the fingers. I can comb through, I can get nice tension, keep it nice and clean and even, and then carving. Going over it again with less pressure here, right on the surface, this kind of true surface layering. I just want to lightly go over this again just to get the right amount out. It's very visual, obviously. Now I have to start with um, the end in mind. I know the length that I want this to be, it would be just kind of above the shoulders um, so that I don't overly layer this, you know, because for that length, it means the hair on the top is gonna to be pretty long. So if I over layer this, there'll be too much of a discrepancy. And I want the hair to be a little bit more like Velcro where the top hair, even though it's disconnected, kind of blends in with the underneath hair. Just wanna take a minute and say hello to everyone watching. Um, Susie Tong is here, Mary Wilson. Uh, some friends from Bolivia as well. As Great, I'm Oregon. glad, always Welcome a pleasure everybody. to be joined um, and a pleasure to represent brands that I really have deep relationship with like Davines. Um, when I owned my own salon in New York over 20 years ago, um, Davines was really just starting to come into America and it was one of the, uh, it was my brand, my salon's main brand. Um, and we were one of the first in the U.S. and I just really embraced 
so much about it, the packaging, the performance, the ideas of sustainability, the fact that it's a family owned company. It didn't bother me that they're Italian either uh, because you know that's always a good thing, especially if you are Italian like me. Um, so I've had a really long relationship with Davinus and then you know, all these years later for it to carry over into being one of Hairbrain's main sponsors and supporters that allow us to bring great education, um, great connectivity, great events. We're so, you know, proud to work with our friends at Davinez. Big year for Davinez. They're uh, returning to live events. They're going to be um, having their worldwide hair tour, which is their kind of global congress where, you know, the Davinez family of hairdressers from all over the world get together and it's in Parma at their beautiful um, headquarters. Okay, so you can see I'm working through the second side now. You know, now that I've got a little bit of a better read for the hair, I know how much pressure to put on. And I'm looking to see, you know, I'm always looking for natural movement in the hair. I very rarely, if never, uh, blow dry totally straight. So I'm looking for that movement. Even if I did want to use a brush or blow it out, I, I would want to see that there's movement in it so that it will respond. I'm working the hair straight back, not all the way to number one, but back to a flat wall using a different kind of, I can see that now, again, that there's references or guides from the previous section here. You just have to be able to look through the hair and see it. Oh, you just um, touched on Marianne Warner's question. Mm -hmm. Are you grabbing a previous section to find the guidelines? And she's yeah. saying hello from Saskatchewan. Yeah, I'm definitely, when I comb, I grab, you know, some of the previous hair. I look through it, I can see it. You see, I can see it right here. I can see a shadow. Now here's the thing, you gotta learn how to cut clean and follow clean guides before you can do this. Um, I think sometimes, and it happens a lot, people see this and they think, oh, that must be easy. It's not as, you know, Where is that guide coming from? It's coming from the previous hair, right? Because look at the, the thickness of the comb. When I come through, I grab some of the previous, and it's not very clean, but it's just an example of going like this. I'm always grabbing some of the previous hair. And it's literally right there with a, with a razor. You can, so you can back comb the hair a little bit and you'll see the hair that falls away is your guide. You know, because the hair is behind your fingers, that's why you want the hair to be damp so that the guide sticks to the previous hair. If the hair was totally dry, it would fall away and you wouldn't really be able to work well, uh, at least well with, with a guide. Uh, Frank Mussolino is saying hello as well as Steven Statlin. Welcome. Thanks for hanging out. So my East Coast buddies, Again, so you can, I'm starting to see that movement and look at what it's doing with the color hair. This will be the most layered part. I'm gonna bring the length up um, and then this hair, I'm gonna kind of keep one length, but in a very invisible way. All right, I'm gonna move into the sides now. Um, I don't wanna just keep over directing back or the sides will be too bulky. So I start a new guideline here on the side over the ears. But again, really have to think about what my end result is going to be in terms of length as I begin to put this in and make sure I don't overly layer it. So I want to think about where it's going to fall and I want the layers really to be on the last couple inches of the hair. So I visually come in, starting right about here and really sketching it in using the edge of the blade. Section. And is this just pulled straight out from where it lives? These are going to all be brought back to the same position to help get that little kick that we like around the face in uh, kind of a loose one length look. So I'm bringing number two all the way back to number one. Hair gets considerably thicker here. So sketching a little bit more forcefully. Come through. You can see the section here. I let's. I want some of the front to get lightened in the underneath, because sometimes you know when I do this, if I leave all of that front hair out, it can seem too solid when I drop the top down. So I'm going to include a little bit of that hair, as you can see, in this area. So even if I bring this all back together like this. I wanted to keep that existing length. I'm gonna use that kind of as a reference 
when I bring this back and kind of make a little bit of an A-line outline. But let me layer the other side first. Again, you can see the beautiful colors here. Um, even with the hair damp, you can see how complimentary these beautiful tones are. Done by Alison Daza, a Davines educator here in California. Um, she used a View, which is the demi-permanent line from Davines, super popular, something that came out a few years ago. It's kind of revolutionized that whole demi-permanent, um, especially for people in Davines world, because there wasn't one before. And on this side, she's used Mass with Vibrochrome, which is the permanent color. Kelly's got the formulas there, um, in case you guys are interested. Okay, coming back into the second side. Again, not overly elevating here either. Just keeping this real simple, real comfortable. And notice just kind of skimming the top. So, you know, to, uh, in a lot of ways, this is simple haircutting. Um, but simple doesn't mean easy. You know, if you're not clean, if you're not organized, if you don't understand over direction, elevation, tension, control, body position, you know, simple things can turn into be just quite, quite a mess and disorganized. So, you know, I, I always, always say to focus first on mastering technical cutting, you know, um, because like I said, if you can't follow a clean guide, then you can't follow something like this. It's, you know, it, 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 it just becomes a ball of hair that you've just cut. Got to be organized, got to really understand the effect of what you're doing. Bringing that last piece back even knowing enough to like turn it so that I'm on the top of the hair because I'm trying to stay on the top all the way through here. Did you, did you prep the hair with anything before you started cutting? Yeah, I left a little bit of the oil conditioner in the hair. I shampooed and conditioned because the mannequin already came kind of dried and styled. I shampooed and conditioned using oil and I left a little bit of the oil milk in the hair which is kind of like a beautiful leave-in conditioner. Um, and I think it's given me this beautiful, it, it, you know, when you work like this, you want some product in the hair. See, so I can see what it's gonna look like. It's not completely untreated in a way, which is kind of important, very important. Um, and, you know, you don't want that hair to, because you know, the way that I'm gonna style it is to kind of look like it looks now, but dry. So I'm building that in right now. Okay, so I know I wanted to be right about the edge of the neck. I'm going to come in first between kind of where the layers fall and where the length is going to be and put just a little space using what I like to call the slicing technique. And then again with the edge of the blade and about a half inch stroke, keeping my fingers nice and square, cutting a square line. I'm going to bring everything back to this square line, put the head up. And this is going to give me a very simple A-line, you know, not kind of the traditional A-line where I cut the angle in, but the A-line where I over-direct it in. Bring this back. I'm not going to put any slicing here because this is the thinnest area right behind the ear. I'll even close my stroke a little bit shorter. Now, this is quite a, a hefty section that you're lopping off in one go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this hair is already really layered on the top from there to there. Um, so, I mean, if you felt like you couldn't manage it, you couldn't see through it, you couldn't control it, you could definitely subsection. But you can see it's really, even though I'm grabbing all the hair, by the time it gets to where I'm cutting, it's not a lot of hair. But of course, you could always subsection. I just, with this particular head of hair, don't feel it, it to be necessary. So you can see I'm bringing that back around square. Again, not slicing yet. I may, as I move on from this point, but right now, not. So that's exactly what I wanted to do. Keep that existing length at the front and get myself just a little simple A-line from over direction. Simple a angle forward and a little bit of scattered surface texture from what we did with the razor. Now let's do it again on the opposite side. So again, Kelly is right. I'm not subsectioning this, but by the time I get down here to the bottom, really this hair is just... Um, it's about as much as I'd have in a normal section. If I came down here and it felt a lot thicker, then I would definitely subsection. Again, putting some slicing in here. Every half inch or so, the blade just goes straight in. And then on the side of the blade, I just carve my way down. Just doing that in the middle. And that, see, that makes it even, even less hair. Here in the middle where the hair would probably be the densest. 
It makes for even less hair. Making sure we've got a good square line here. Using the blade a little flat to take off that little excess. I'll come back and make sure we've got separation down there. Looking through, using the slicing again, but in a miniature way, just on the ends of the hair. Watch the head position, beginning to go in a much more natural position. No slicing here behind the ear because we don't want to make this any thinner. And even being very aware to bring the stroke shorter and shorter as I get right to the back of the ear. Let's check the balance here. Now it's okay to also, and I encourage people to do this a lot, do a little checking with your scissor, especially on, on outlines and things like that to make sure that you're keeping a good balance because we don't want to overdo it. So using point cutting, holding in the comb, looking for that square line. A little heavy here. So, you know, sometimes if I feel like I'm starting to get heavy, I will pull out the scissor. Uh, because if you keep going over and over it again with the razor, um, you're not only going to make it shorter, you're going to make it thinner, which can be a problem. So that's what I did right there. Yeah, in a perfect world, you get it right the first time, but uh, I don't live in a perfect world. So when I need to make adjustments, very often I'll pull out the scissor. Are there other um, Japanese products that you like to use as a cutting aid? Yeah, there's the Day Day Leave-In Conditioner. It's probably one of the most popular. Um, it's a nice light spray. Um, there is the Liquid Spell, which is another kind of like leave-in conditioner that has some styling pr uh, properties to it. Um, but my favorite is Oi. I love the Oi Milk. I love the Oi Shampoo and Conditioner. I love the Oi Body Wash. Uh, I'm an Oi boy. Oh, and also if you're using, um, if your client has thinner hair, the Milu. Right. Also has a great... I mean, just in general, I mean, I'll be honest, the Davinus has everything. It's such an extensive line with so many sublines, um, and they have such high integrity with what they make. And uh, there's something for everyone there, for every texture of hair, for every need. Um, you know, and I, I, I love the way they work with salons. You know, you don't have to have every single one of their products. Um, they help try to figure out what's right for you within the lines that they have. And I think that that's a wonderful thing to do. I'm gonna come back through the sides here and put a little bit of vertical slicing through the ends. Just on those last little ends there. I think that this will help to, again, just get that little separation and space and airiness that I want around the face. I'll leave this out because it's already, you know, um, on the finer side there. But I'm looking to see that that hair will be moldable, kickable, flippable. Now you can go much deeper with this, but remember my goal is to have kind of like a more of a one length look here. I think that's what's gonna really complement the color. So I've been really focusing on the ends of the hair, the layers being longer, you know, um, you can be very minimal with the razor. It isn't always about, you know, seeing every cut in the hair and being kind of really aggressive. It can be a beautiful, gentle tool. Um, in the back here, same thing. I want to get a little bit of slicing between the length that I just created and where the layers end. You'll see it makes a bit of a corner. And this will help that to not be quite so cornery and dense and give it some more life, movement, flickability. At what point would you think you might be over, over slicing? You know, if the hair just starts to lose structure, um, you know, there's a definite structure in here. There's definite, you know, over directions, definite cutting angles. I want to be able to see them. And if, you know, if I'm overdoing it, that's what I mean by it just becomes a ball of hair. There's no shape or direction. You know, I think great haircuts give hair direction and shape. Um, even if it's not overly shaped, and again, that's kind of a, 
a fine line to explain of something not being overly shaped, um, you know, where you can see blunt visible lines and corners, but they're there. Okay. Rebecca, before we move on, Rebecca yeah. was wondering, um, would you cut this the same way if it was curly? Uh, you know, th this hair is, let's call it wavy. Um, you know, I, I do believe you can cut curly hair with the blade. I am working with the blade um, for the most part on what I call the edge, which is how I work with curly hair with the blade, meaning I don't use the blade flat and kind of shave the hair. So I think, you know, a, a lot of the things could work. I mean, the thing that I'd have to really read and understand is the tension that I'm using because I am using a good bit of tension. The curlier the hair is, the more it's gonna shrink back. So all this might have to happen a few inches longer to get it to be a shoulder length. But do I think that I could, I, I do think I could cut it the same way, except with different kind of factor of, um, of tension. Meaning I'd have to, you know, really understand how much the hair is gonna spring up. You know, and not all curly hair springs the same. So you'd have to kind of really begin to understand that hair. All right, now I'm dropping the hair down from the top, and here I'm cutting the line first. I'm looking at where the underneath reference is. I go a little bit past it so I can give myself room, especially with an open stroke. If I got cut right to the line with an open stroke like this, I'll start to get graduation, which I don't want. Then I can lift this hair away and let some of the underneath drop away, and I can put a little bit of slicing in here. So just coming through. You know, the shape on the top of the head here was kind of um, like a big egg shape. It can be kind of fun to work with, you know. It's, it's gonna let all this hair kind of swing around on the top of the head. And again, I can use, I can use square over direction here so it'll fall forward a little bit more angular. So I start from here. And I wanna go Past the guide, I can see it in my fingers here, so that when my stroke is open, I'm giving myself room so that I don't, if you, if you nail it right onto the guide, you'll start to get what we call razor graduation. And I don't want this surface to get very graduated. But I will put a few slices in. You have to be careful with how much you do this. Sometimes we use what we call tipping, and tipping will definitely add graduation. Where here, I'm just trying to kind of add some separation without overdoing the tipping. section here. This again, you can see if you see the section, it's all being directed right back within here. So as it falls forward, the corners will naturally be longer. Simple hair cutting, simple hair color. I mean, you know, what we are seeing this. It's like, um, I guess Tom and Ashley, the creative team uh, behind the collections at Davinez, they kind of saw this coming. It was the collection that they did that featured this was a, a little while ago. Um, and now it seems like, you know, uh, our social media team, as they're always looking for things to post, they're seeing all of this kind of two-tone color. I don't know, Kelly, is there another name that people are using when they kind of color one side? Oh, there's a bunch, usually like a 50-50. A 50-50. Split. A split. But there's a lot of copper. Yeah, a lot of coppers. And that's what we're seeing here with this beautiful, I guess both of the colors have like a copper kind of quality to them. The blonde is done using Mask with Vibrochrome by Alison Daza. Um, and Mask with Vibrochrome is Davinez's um, full permanent. color. Uh, what's uh, permanent. What? permanent color? Thank you, full color. Permanent color, oxidative permanent color. And then on the opposite side, where I'll show you in just a second, we've got View, which is the demi permanent color. So just checking any, you know, because of the over direction. Um, there may be a few pieces that fall a little bit longer than the line. So just checking them in right here and here. So simple, it's like, you know, looking one length, but with a lot more playfulness to it. And I, you know, so I think when you have something so bold with color, even though these tones are very lovely and subtle, it still is, you know, the average person was still gonna feel that that's a bold color to be one color on one side, one color on the other. So for me, I, I don't want to kitchen sink it and then also make, you know, the most wild haircut in the world because I just think that, you know, 
you have to just use some restraint perhaps. So I still want a great haircut. I still want to be engaged with it, but just doing it in a very, very simple way. It's, it's a very kind of intimate haircut where I'm really working within the hair and understanding the hair texture um, without overdoing it. Less is definitely more. When you initially sectioned the hair and you, and you sectioned out the hairline hair, how did you know that the correct thickness to take? Because it was, it was quite thin, so is it just the type of hair that it was or? Yeah, I mean, I looked at the hairline. I mean, a mannequin hairline is even all the way through. So I just wanted to have enough hair underneath to kind of lighten the load here at the front. Um, so I didn't feel like I needed a lot. I just, cause it's even, and I just wanted this area here to be a little more playful. If the hair felt a lot, um, you know, thinner, perhaps you would have taken more hair. Um, but since mine was all consistently even, I, I was able to, I think, get the effect that I wanted without having to take too, too much hair. If it was thinner hair, you might want to take more. I'm going to separate this front piece here and go in a little deeper, like from the lip area. This will help to give it that, again, that kick forward that I want. Really kind of carving that hair in to do what I want it to do. And again, I put some slicing on the top. Um, you know, because of whatever was previously done to the mannequin, there isn't a lot of excess length here on the side. It's, you can see it's just a little tiny bit, and this is the permanent color sign, the mask with vibrochrome. And you can see there's just a little bit of hair to come off. There was much more underneath. I think the hair was kind of traditionally long layered at some point. And then in this area here, letting the underneath drop out and really coming through, creating some space on those last three or four inches of hair. And then right up in here, coming in a little deeper from about lip level. I'm really trying to get some looseness here. Last thing that I'll do is I will lift some of this hair straight up and do some slicing at a higher elevation perhaps really just back here in the crown to complement this shape, just to get that little bit more texture and lift at the back. So I'm gonna come right back in here, take one or two sections over the crown, cross the parting. And use what I call backhand razoring, just coming in a little bit more. One here, and perhaps one here. Not going any deeper than the, the very crown of the head. Okay, looking to get a feel for where we're at with it. It's a great way to kind of sculpt and mold the hair using uh, a hair pick. This one's from Vess. Some people might be familiar with it over the years. It's something that can be used when working with the hair other than just using your fingers. So again, it's got this one length look, but in a kind of deconstructed, looser way, which is really what it's about. All right, I'm going to add a little bit. Um, I think I want to get a little bit more control of the hair, so I'm going to use some of the foam. This is the volume foam from the More Inside line. Uh, this is a volume boosting foam. It's for long lasting, buoyant textures. That's what I want a long lasting, buoyant texture. Uh, Michael Wild Rice is saying hello and saying it looks awesome. He just had an event at his space, so congratulations. Awesome. Glad to hear it. So really just focusing this into the ends. I don't want a lot of that buoyant texture at the root. I just want to create moisture and control on the ends. I always love a foam. I guess, you know, it's just from my era of hairdressing, foams and mousses, um, something I've always loved to work with. I always felt like, you know, if, it go, if it's in your hands and it's light and airy, then that's what it's going to do in the hair, right? Because it doesn't 
you know, heavy, thick creams and things like that. They just feel a little bit different. But I'm like, how does it feel on your hands? And that feels, you know, I don't even feel like compelled to go and run and wash my, rinse my hands. Really getting the product through and starting to create those deliberate separations. I'm gonna put a little bit of heat on, on her so we can start to see the color and see how beautifully she dries off. Working with the Dyson Supersonic and just using downward airflow with my diffuser. Can use your gravity to help. And this is really, really simple. I just want to dry it a little bit so you guys can really see the color. Um, I could also put her under the heat lamp or out in the beautiful California sunshine. Just so we can get a real clear view of this beautiful color from Allison. This is the view side. It's a beautiful, even pigment. I'd say rich and just beautiful all the way through from root to tip. A little bit. And here we've got, this is the side using the view, which is the Demi Permanent. And Kel has put the um, formulas in there for those of you that are interested in exactly what Allison used. You know, I shampooed the mannequin um, and conditioned her before this lesson, and really nothing ran out. Obviously, you're always a little worried. Um, and I was worried that I would rinse the color down the drain, but nothing came out, so that adhesion to the hair was really good. If I'm going to lift it anywhere, it's going to be here in the back. And let move the air around just a little bit more. Drawing nicely, volume foam, really nice and touchable, not crunchy or sticky at all, but added the moisture and definition. I wanted to mention uh, that, you know, it's spring. This is a beautiful spring color. We've got um, a beautiful sale happening to celebrate spring over at hairbrain.pro. 20% off all tools. Um, we've also got at Hairbrain Live Academy, we've got a discount on our yearly, save $60 on a yearly subscription. And some of our newest courses are 30% off. So again, um, if you want to support us, if you want to go a little bit deeper with Hairbrain, head to hairbrain.pro or hblive.me. And from either site, you can get back and forth to look at courses or tools. And check out what's there. I know you won't be disappointed. I also want to thank Allison Daza again for supplying this great mannequin. Um, I've got actually a few of them, so I'm going to be doing some, some of these cuts on pre-colored mannequins that Allison colored. I'm excited about that. All right, now that the hair is getting drier, almost totally dry, I feel like I can manipulate it a bit more. You know, when it's wet, I don't want to overly do it. But now I feel like I can definitely get a grasp on it. Middles to ends. You can see that beautiful color. To get, make sure the roots get a little bit lifted off the head. I can come in and just lift like so. I don't want a lot of volume here, but I also don't want it to look like the roots weren't thought of at all.
really excited for June with the Domino's Worldwide Hair Tour, where um, Randy Taylor, Hair Brain co-founder and MC, will be there. There comes special appearance from Rex once he's outside. There goes our boy. First, we have a bear. We have our own bear here in California. All right, I think that's. Let me get just feel it one more time. It feels totally dry without being over dried. And I'm just going to give a little bit of a blast with the hair refresher. Uh, it's a dry cleaning mist. I know um, Davinus has a new um, dry shampoo, but I don't have it yet. So I'm still working with this one, which I've always enjoyed. I don't feel like it needs a lot, but just a little bit through here. Over the surface. And there we have it. A little bit more of an A-line quality, still very one length looking so that we don't take away from this fun color, the 50-50, as Kelly says. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks again to Davinus. Thanks especially to Allison Dowza for supplying me with this great mannequin.